Right, so this is best of the web. Uh, it is 2014, that part you all know. We have a number of categories for which we have uh, found good, good mentioned websites that we have all reviewed and pretty much the purpose of today is to recognize a bunch of very good uh, effort in the field and uh, to give a moment of applause and give out lovely, lovely awards that if anybody's had one before, we have a lighter material this year so it's not the 20 pound uh, award that it used to be. You won't go overweight on your luggage, so that's good. And uh, it's, it's relatively quick. This will not be uh, the long, drawn-out award ceremony that we have sometimes done in the past. Uh, we will give a little bit of preamble about Best of the Web, what we do, how we do it, why we do it, because that's exciting. And then we'll go through individual categories, and uh, fellow, fellow judges will come up and, and talk about the individual sites for just a moment. So, Best of the Web, Awards 2014. There are a bunch of us that have been involved. Um, in particular, Kaisa Hartig and, and myself have been co-chairs of the committee. There are a litany of other people that uh, everybody else can read. I don't need to read them to you from places all around the world. We've tried to be international um, despite the strong USA contingent. You know, all we need is a few people to pretend that we are internationally recognized and paying attention to stuff. So we've tried to be very inclusive. Um, with that, there is a process that we have. All the sites that are there have been nominated by you, by the community, by our peers. Then those different, uh, those different sites get broken down into different categories, the categories that we had, and we typically review them to see if they make sense in the category in which they're stated or if they need to be moved around. And then we go through uh, creating a panel of judges that are all volunteers. So should you have ever wanted to volunteer to be a judge, we can talk about that. Um, it's fun, it's great fun. It's a lot of, uh, at the last moment, knowing the deadline is approaching and staying up for a couple of extra hours and getting the sites reviewed is a typical process for it. And then uh, one of the co-chairs badgering you until it's done, but everybody does it in a very humble and pleasant way with a lot of good comments, actually. All the sites are reviewed, are, are explored in depth, tested, reviewed, analyzed, um, drawn and quartered, and actually have some fairly good uh, discussion around them. We tend to disagree with each other about what is good and what is not good. And uh, we express those disagreements uh, some of us more vociferously than others uh, with great enthusiasm, we debate that. And then we actually try and uh, step back a little bit and evaluate all the sites in context in relation to each other, right? So it's not that we're trying to say a single thing is good, but once you've gone through it, you start to realize that your metrics of what is good has changed a little bit over the set of judging. So we try and be relatively hol holistic to that. Then we go through an additional round of, of final judging and then the panel all comes together the week of MW to actually decide who the winners are gonna be. So in short, what we're trying to do is things that have caught our attention, uh, obviously not every nominated site is going to win. And what we really want to do is celebrate innovation and change. People that are actually doing incredible effort and we feel that they need to be inspired by it. So, starting off is Digital Exhibition. Okay, so let's announce the winner of Digital Exhibition. It's Collection Wall. The collection wall is the largest multi-touch display in North America. It encourages... <laughs> it encourages museum visitors to visually explore the breadth of the CMA's collection and uncover deeper associations while also being able to create personalized tours with their iPads. It stimulates curiosity up close and provides... So somebody from Cleveland should come accept yes. the award. That's, <laughs> Access... that's an important part of this. <laughs> Access to the collection through touch while simultaneously providing stunning visualizations from a further vantage point. The collection wall is fully integrated with the museum's digital asset man management system and is a live representation of over 3,800 artworks currently on display in the museum. And some voices from the judges who reviewed this uh, say it's beautifully done, big, expansive, well-designed, good tangibility with the RFID-enabled iPad cases. Overall, a super smart project. The collection wall made quite a buzz in the industry. It, it's a game changer in how we use digital media to connect the visitor with the objects. Um, it's, it encourages interaction with the objects, not just the device. The integration with the iPad app, the iPad app that enables the visitor to walk through the museum is impressive. Congratulations. Next up, education. Who was doing education? Jane, was this you? Jane, Alexander? Okay. <clears throat> Anybody have my notes? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
This is well rehearsed in practice. We do this all the time. Here's a, uh, it's easier to read. Yeah. So for the education <laughs> category, our winner is, I'm sorry. Yeah, winner is a Catalyst Artist Creating with Sound and Video and Time. Sound, video, and performance art experiences, as well as born digital time-based artworks, are rarely on display in most museums, and teachers find them cumbersome to bring into the classroom in authentic ways. MoMA has been an important venue for experience these art forms since 1960, and this is their latest offering. Comments from the judges ended up being relatively interesting. You know, at, at first, it seemed really busy, and there was a level of complexity that wasn't quite understood, but once they started using, realized that the interface was beautifully intuitive, and it was easy to find content on the site. The content was rich, and there was plenty of detail every time they began to look for it. It was a very easy trail of information to follow. There was fantastic com uh, content, and it was a very accomplished execution and a wealth of interactive elements that made this project a true standout. And that the content was thought-provoking and unusual, and it made the person interested in future courses because I think the way that it was presented and taught was incredibly compelling. So thank you. <laughs> Innovative and experimental. Somebody give her an award. Okay, um, for the innovative and experimental category, um, since they have slightly different criteria, I thought I would just uh, talk a little bit about that. So for innovative and experimental, we were looking at sites or apps or platforms that make use of new digital publishing and presentation methodologies and technologies to provide innovative experiences uh, based on content or services. So these are assessed less on the overall intended project success and more on their innovative objectives, originality, and potential for development for the field. So the quality characteristics for this category included creative, new, innovative uses of web and digital media, application of new web concepts, methodologies, and technological applications, um, introduction of new and emerging technologies and museum digital products, experimental and creative uses of emerging technology, and uses of technology that offer new possibilities for further development. And the winner in this category Oh, sorry. Oh, there was an honorable mention. So, the honorable mention in this category is Gallery One from the Cleveland Museum of Art. There's not an award for the honorable mention. You can sit back down. There's no award. <laughs> Everybody, Jane Alexander. Yay! Okay. And the winner in this category is, come on, there we go, uh, the Dallas Museums of Arts DMA Friends Program. So, there's Rob, come on. For those of you who've been hiding under a rock for the last year, uh, DMA Friends is an incredibly ambitious project. It's an open source technical infrastructure and user experience designed to incentivize and track participation and engagement by visitors to the Dallas Museum of Arts. Using an innovative web-based platform, visitors participate in the program through iPad-based kiosks, texting from their mobile devices and online, and as visitors connect with the museum, they create personal profiles, work towards earning badges, check into different activities, and earn rewards for progress and participation. So basically, they've built an entire small economy built on participation of visitors with the institution. Um, the system touches on any number of different business systems and required a significant institutional process shift beyond just the core technologies. If you imagine throwing out your membership program and paid admission and implementing this thing that touches every single aspect of the museum's operation, you get an idea of how much they bid off. Um, the thing that I find most exciting about the whole thing is the fact that they have built in from the outset constant monitoring and metrics that are captured to create a really interesting, deep understanding of what their visitors actually do. Um, if nothing else, that will probably transform all of our practice in the coming years. So some of the contents from the judges, some of the comments from the judges, this is a fantastic project. It merges marketing, creating a long-term relationship with visitors, so getting beyond the transactional visit model, uh, with an extreme approach to personalization by which every visitor can have a unique visit experience and also tailored return experiences. So when you come back, it knows that you've been, it gives you different things based on what you saw last time, um, the things that we have been talking about at places like this and MCN for a number of years. Um, there's a, huh? You just pitch MCM? I did not. Oh, okay. oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, Ed. 
Okay, almost done. Um, there's a good mix between authoritative and user-generated content. Uh, the activities are not all exclusively digital. There are actual physical things, so this marrying of the online and the on-site, um, and an interesting mix of um, different kinds of activities. This word will probably get overused in this session, but uh, one of the overall comments is, I think it's a game changer in terms of the way by which the visitor is addressed personally, not by guessing their preferences, but by actively engaging them in a variety of activities. I think it's a very commendable strategy. And so do we, thank you. Long lived, Liz Neely. So long lived is the category for something that's been around for a while, stands the test of time, has adapted over time. And the winner is the Horniman. Oh, did I go? Yeah. Oh, yeah, OK. Um, anyone here from there? Yay. By 2010, the Horniman Museum and Gardens website had become, uh, it had been in existence for the best part of a decade without any major amendments. Whew. Uh, the website had become out of date, confusing, did not reflect the organization's personality well. In early 2010, the Museum and Gardens, a family friendly South London museum, began a concerted effort to reinvent and reinvigorate the digital offer. The Horniman launched its new website in 2011, which has been architected, designed, and developed by Keep Thinking with collections data extraction by knowledge integration. Since then, further activity has taken place each year to augment and grow the website with new features, functionality, ensuring that the website adapts to user behavior and is a reliable and consistent quality. And what we liked about it, what the judges liked about it, is the creative use of imagery, fresh look and feel with a subtle navigation that helps a lot, it said that we, uh, the judges said it had high information density without looking cluttered, looking forward to the responsive mobile version. Uh, great use of Tumblr and lots of interactiveness and sharing. Great job. Is, is there nobody from the Horniman here? No? Okay. We'll, uh, we'll save that one and uh, give it back. Mobile? While it seems like we've seen hundreds and hundreds of interesting mobile app, uh, applications for, for museums, it's only been a few years that this has actually been a category with some really thrilling contestants um, in it this year. Um, it was hard to choose where we were going to go. Um, the winner in this particular category for this year is Artland's iPhone, iPad app. Um, the <laughs> Now we get the picture. <laughs> the Artland's iPad iPhone application is a unique personal guide for museum visitors loaded with video, audio, text, and still image content. Artland's helps visitors to explore the artworks on display and in the galleries and encourages visitors to create their own customized tours. Visitors can check out an iPad preloaded with Artland's upon entry to the museum or bring their own iPad iPhone and use the free application both in the gallery one and throughout the museum. Um, in, in terms of the things that the visitors said about this particular app, was the, the, it's just chock full of, um, of depth in terms of audio, video, et cetera. Um, and when you're using it on the, the iPhone itself, it can download almost 13,000 images within a, to a phone. Um, judges says they could have spent days on this app and that they especially appreciated the top 10 visitor features. Um, one of the, the interesting pieces on this as we've debated mobile over the years is that this particular element has a variety of access points. So you may be using it on your phone and have one experience. You may use it in the gallery and with the R uh, Artland's iPad experience, it can sense your location and offer stories as you move through the gallery. Congratulations to Artland's. Next up, research and collections online. This category is about online collections. <laughs> so. There's an honorable mention, and the honor honorable mention is the online catalog of Chinese painting and calligraphy. The winner is Operation War Diary. So, amazing.
Anyone from Imperial War? No. So Operation War Diaries, actually a collaboration. Yeah. yeah. Operation War Diary is a collaboration between the Imperial War Museum, the National Archives, and Zooniverse to tag and classify the daily diaries of all British Army infantry units on the Western Front, 1914-1918. The full archive comprises 1.5 million pages of daily reports detailing Army activities, casualties, and movements. The sheer size of the collection has made it impossible to study in depth. This is the first attempt to examine the Western Front at this level of detail by crowdsourcing research into the daily lives of soldiers. Um, overall impressions from the judges were that it was amazing. Um, it offers a compelling, satisfying experience for citizen historian types. It's deeply immersive, regularly updated, and what's really amazing is it exposes a massive collection to an audience and then uses the audience to, um, to enrich the collection. So it's like a full life cycle circle. It's, it's an amazing uh, project. Everyone should check it out. Next up, Rich Media. Okay, this was a fun one. And uh, for our Rich Media category, the winner is, and I just I need to say that this actually, uh, we got help from our friends in, um, in Barcelona on how to pronounce this. It's uh, the, uh, ta now I'm gonna mess it up. Ta'owl. <laughs> uh, ta it's an immersive experience, and um, this is, a, if they have the video um, on the best of the web, and I highly recommend it, because this is really something pretty different. Um, so it is an immersive experience on site, on site, that brings visitors to the Romanesque Church of St. Clement de Taou, um, to the past, precisely to the year 1123, when the apse of the church was painted with the iconic figures of God and saints. Those paintings were moved to the Museo de Nacional de Catalunya in Barcelona in the year 1920. And now, with this project, they are virtually returned to the walls of the church thanks to a mapping structure of six high-quality projectors over the real remains of the uh, Romanesque paintings. The paintings of the museum are projected exactly in the original place, so on the wall, there's projection of them. Um, where they were, and it becomes a truly augmented reality experience, but without mobile device for all the visitors. So it's projecting it on the walls, and there's music, and it's just this really amazing um, experience on the video. But if anyone wants to send me, I, mean, I think we all need to go, right? <laughs> we all must go. Um, the immersive rich media installation is an innovative way to not only visually tell the history of the church and its visual symbolism, but it also serves us to reflect on what has not survived over time. This performance is very well done using musical and dramatic visual effects to make the story compelling. I also appreciate the spotlight near the end. Uh, we also appreciated the spotlight near the end, reminding the audience through the projected reproduction of the starkness of that remains beneath. And I should say that, that there is a, at the end of it, when it's fully been reconstructed. So you're sitting in the dark, you're watching the music, you've seen it reconstructed in light and projector. They bring a spotlight comes in and shows what's underneath it. That is the kind of the more dull, like what remains underneath it. So you really get this sense of, because you could get lost that it was there and then you get reminded that it's not there. So. Watch the video, really cool. Congratulations. And the next category, museum professional. Uh, the last one? There's nobody from Barcelona here to pick up the award? Anybody that will be traveling to Barcelona soon? <laughs> no? Okay. Museum professional. Um, so museum professional is the category where Obviously, professional development for museum people happens, and the projects um, that we uh, had were um, reviewed, and the winner is uh, Museo Punks. And right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, unfortunately, neither Suze Cairns nor uh, Jeffrey Insko is here, but um, for those of you who don't know what, what, what it is, uh, it's a podcast for the Progressive Museum. Every month, Jeffrey and Suze uh, investigate the fascinating work and personalities in and around the museum sector, 
And this has been going on since uh, April 2013. And they've explored some of the most boundary-pushing work and ideas. Episodes have focused on topics such as museums in the age of scale, emergent conservation approaches for born digital and emerging media, organizational structure and strategy, and innovative curation. So some of the uh, comments, a couple of the comments that I'll read you. Um, I cannot think of a better example of the kind of ground up professional development that the web makes possible. Museo Punks provides compelling content for some of the most innovative doers and thinkers in the field in an engaging informal context. Though the, me the medium of the podcast is by no means innovative, for this content, conversations amongst peers, it's the perfect fit. Awesome. I am happy Museo Punks exists, and they are a pleasure to listen to. So if you don't know where it is, it's museopunks.org, and I really recommend that all of you dive right in. It's great. Next up, social media. Social media is the social media category. It's media, only more social. Um, and the winner is the Horniman. Um, so in this project called, uh, you know what, I, I'm just gonna talk about it. Um, when, when we were talking about this uh, project and, and social media and the integration of social media and what's new and interesting about it, um, I went to the website and I thought, well, you know, it's kind of not actually all that amazing. And then um, discovered the Tumblr account and uh, it's beautiful. And, and this is where, um, if you're going to check it out and you should, you should really view the Tumblr account. And what we're seeing as a screenshot actually isn't really doing it justice because it's the page, but when you see it in your feed, that's when you see how remarkable it really is. Um, the, the photography of the objects, the descriptions, they're short, they're interesting, they often end with a question, they cause reflection on the part of the person viewing it, and um, when you have a long Tumblr feed, they just stand out um, and make you want to learn about the collection. So it's extremely successful, um, it's really well designed for exactly what its purpose is. So, congratulations. Next up is the small museum category. So we can't all build collection walls. Um, and as we're looking through um, these um, websites and, and offerings, um, we look for organizations that are small or represent small museums um, to try to pull out and recognize projects that really often have a lot of love in them or can actually overcome lack of resources um, or even, you know, just having to, hold on, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move on. Uh, so this was a tight one, I'm sorry, I was losing it, losing it. This was a tight one today, we actually had an honorable mention. Oh. Nope, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which way am I going? Anything away. No, yeah, I no. I didn't, I didn't do it. You didn't do it, all right, well it was, um, <laughs> Victoria Collections. Victorian Collections in Australia. That's all right. That's all right. The, uh, what was remarkable about this one, especially for uh, me uh, in the United States, is that it actually delivers a collections for 200 small museums. Um, and it does it in a way that is clean, um, that is, it allows for serendipity, um, and it's easy to find things that you uh, want to find searchable. Um, you can, it comes with a map, you can choose which collection you want to go to just by looking at the map of Australia, uh, and it has an API, and it's also responsive, which is really impressive for a small museum. And then the winner is, as I've already revealed, the Tang Museum for Class and Society. <laughs> What was nice about this one is uh, that it takes on a big issue, a class, and it looks at it from many different um, perspectives. It looks at it from wealth, income, um, race, uh, from whether you're rural, rural or uh, urban, 
uh, male or female, what your education level is. And it upfront provides information, some research about these issues, graphs about these issues, and the testimonials, personal testimonials from people who have experienced um, these divides um, and how they come to terms with, am I poor? Am I middle class? What does it mean um, that I'm black? What does it mean that I don't have an education or that I'm getting an education but I have problems maintaining that education because my family's poor? Um, along with it, at the center of this is a, is a collection of 20 artists who use their art to explore these ideas. Uh, and it blends back and forth uh, really well. Uh, it's very handsome. You can see the images are almost all like this. They're beautiful. Um, and it, too, is responsive. Okay. And next up is the People's Choice Award. I'm honored to present this award, which I did not judge. All of you were the judges uh, of this particular award. People's Choice Award has been around since 2008. And if I remember correctly, during that particular season, there was quite a bit of lobbying, a uh, vote for my site um, passed out uh, w during the conference itself. Um, this year, um, we had 58 wonderful uh, nominees to choose from that you could go for through and and select as your particular best of the web from your point of view. It was very important to us as a committee to encourage this sort of voting, mainly so that you could participate in the arguments that we all have. I don't think any of you have lived until you've been able to argue with Mike Edson about what is the essential nature of a podcast and the essential nature of a museum in the late night until you are able to come to some sort of agreement or at least be worn down in terms of what it means to, to give an award in, in, within our field. This particular year, it was pretty clear cut. We have a beautiful site judged by you all, um, and that is the Renolda House Museum of American Art, based in Winston-Salem. I think someone from Renolda House is here this year, yes? Congratulations, photo op opportunity. So we don't know what was in all of your minds as you chose this as the most, uh, as the thing that you wanted to advocate for, but we could certainly tell as we go forward in looking at this that this was a site that had um, three separate collections um, digitized on their site um, with an enormous number of exhibition and loan history pieces, artist and maker bibliographies, high resolution digital images, enhanced curatorial descriptions, Provence history, scans of historical documents and it goes on. There is a wealth of information here um, and it, this particular piece launched in, in September of 2013, the new digital weaning and it com completes this three-year cataloging project uh, of their collections. If you didn't vote, if you did not have an opportunity to look through this when you were doing it, we encourage you to do so now. And the final category. And uh, best of overall is interesting. It's the process for that ends up being a, a relatively heated debate um, of, of the different sites that we've all judged. Uh, uh, anybody that, that won another category, or even sites that necessarily didn't win, but have truly stood out, have all been contenders for, for the best overall. And this year, it was, uh, it was surprisingly close. There was a single point of difference between the winner and the runner up. But that being said, the, the winner of this year's best of the web is DMA Friends. Yeah. Ed already spoke remarkably eloquently, of, uh, eloquently, well, with good words that made sense. Uh, we spoke eloquently of DMA Friends already. There's nothing I'm gonna add to it other than to say, not only to Rob, but to all the other winners of the different categories, congratulations. Yeah.